Let's see. Good morning. Good morning. And welcome to this morning's worship service. Um, I'm Pastor Brian, and just glad that y'all are here today. Uh, and whether you're joining us in person or online, we're glad that you're here. It's going to be, a, I'm going to go ahead and let you know now, it's format wise, it's a little bit different. Now, you might look at the bulletin and say, but Brian, it still looks very much the same. You're exactly right. <laughs> That's the way Presbyterians do change, subtly. <laughs> so what we're going to do is during the sermon time, I'm going to introduce the topic and talk a little bit about it, and then I'm going to pose a few questions to you. Then you're going to turn to your immediate neighbors, as you're comfortable, and discuss. And my hope is... From that discussion, more discussion will take place afterward in other ways, and, and who knows, it could stir action. So that's what we hope for in the long run. So, uh, But it's going to be centered around, you know, we're thinking about Earth Day was Friday, and, and so we're kind of focused on that this weekend. So uh, that's what we're going to do. Now, you might also notice you have a blank page on the back of your calendar. Well, if you don't need your calendar because you get it in the email or whatever, I would invite you to take your pencil, pen, whatever, and as you have thoughts in response to those questions as you're discussing them with your little group that you're turning and discussing with, ideas are going to pop up. Jot them down. Write them down. And then when we're collecting the offering and the plate comes by, Put them in. They're not going to get thrown away, I promise. I'm going to take a look at them. And if, it, if it's something we can grab a hold to, it'll go to a committee. It might be an idea that we can follow through with. It could be something that helps make a difference in some way. So that's what we're doing today. And, and this is kind of a guinea pig sort of a day for this because I've never done this before. And I'm fairly certain y'all haven't either. <laughs> So at least I know you haven't for a year and a half. Uh, so we'll, we'll take a shot with this and see what we think of it. And then there'll be other opportunities in the future uh, to do something of a, a similar venue. Um, so anyway, that, that's what's cooking during the sermon. So that's why it's, it's you'll notice I, I, I'm trying to play on a lot of the, the social media things now. So it's sermon plus, you know. <laughs> It's not just sermon, it's sermon plus. <laughs> All righty. Um, well, we're continuing to meet over at finally hours on Wednesdays at 9 a.m. And so if you'd like to come meet for coffee hour there, there's usually about five or six of us. Uh, there can be as many as will fit in there. So all the more the merrier as far as Finally, hours is concerned for sure, uh, but if you if you want to come out and just enjoy a cup of coffee and some fellowship, uh, that's where we'll be, 9 a.m. on Wednesdays. Then, let's see, what else we have on the calendar here? We do have session meeting tomorrow night, uh, and you can see all the other things that are going on there. Uh, da -da -da -da. And we are very quickly coming up on May. And so if you have information that uh, something that you want to make sure kind of gets out early in May or even for the summer, the first part of May is a, th this week is a great time to get that information to the church office so that we can make sure it gets in the right publications and in the right places. So uh, with all that, then I would ask if there are any other announcements. Really? Okay. <laughs> it's like an auction. Nobody flinched this time, though. <laughs> All righty. Well, in that case, then turn to your neighbors with whom you'll be discussing things shortly and wave for a good morning and peace of Christ be with you. <laughs> Nothing about me.
Good morning. Good morning. Deb Swanke here. I'd like to ask you to join me with the call to worship. Hallelujah. Praise God from heaven. Praise Him from the mountaintops. Praise Him, all you angels. Praise Him, all you His warriors. Praise, Praise Him, Sun and Moon. Praise Him, you morning stars. Praise Him, high heaven. Praise Him, heavenly rain clouds. Praise, so oh, let them praise the name of God. He spoke the word and there they were. He set them in place from all time to eternity. He gave his orders, and that's it. Praise God from earth, you sea dragons, you fathomless ocean deeps. Fire and hail, snow and ice, hurricanes obey his orders. Mountains and all hills, apple orchards and cedar forests. Wild beasts and birds of cattle, snakes and birds in flight. Earth's kings and all races leaders, and important people. Robust men and women in their prime, and yes, great years and little children. Let them praise the name of God. It's the only name worth praising. God's greatness exceeds anything in the earth and sky. He's built a monument, his very own people. Praise from all who love God. Israel's intimate friends of God. Hallelujah. Friends, please join me as we confess our weakness 
and seek God's goodness. Creator of the earth and all living things, maker of the sky, and the air, and the breath of life, God of all grace, we are your servant people, created out of clay in the earth itself. We forget that we are your creatures, and we play in the past. We neglect the word of stewardship, and you have power.
Well, I was hoping there were going to be some children in the audience and in the congregation this morning to give me a hand, so I'm going to ask all of you to let your inner child out and give me a hand with this um, minute permission this morning. So, who knows what this is? Right. Okay. Sometimes they're called blankies, sometimes they're called lovies, but they all have the same purpose to give us some comfort, some warmth, make us feel a little bit better when we're not feeling good. Now, does any, do any of you, did you have a blanket or do you have a blanket? Because I still, I don't have my original, but I still have a favorite blanket that I like to carry around with me from room to room just for the comfort of it all. Okay, so what are some of the other things that we can do with a blanket? Warm. Head on your Right, on your head. Anything else? How about forts? Oh yeah. Tents? <laughs> yes. Capes. That was always yeah. a big one. Yeah. That was always a biggie. Mm -hmm. um, let's see, what else? Uh, just, you know, you can use it as a pillow. There's so many things you can do with a blanket. Now imagine if you had to leave your home suddenly. There was a fire, a flood, some catastrophe, and you couldn't take your blanket with you. How would you feel? Sad. Sad, right? Sad, maybe a little lonely, a little scared. Well, that's where church world service comes in. They supply blankets to people who have been dis displaced, who are, you know, suffering from being away from home. And there are so many things other than just keeping warm that, that you can use these blankets for. They're very heavy duty. It's pretty heavy. You can use it to carry things. You can use it as a privacy sheet and some of those Refugees places are very crowded. You can use it to, as a cover, protection from the weather, the sun, the rain. So these are so useful. So last year, Church World Service provided about 183,000 blankets to people in need. And coming up in two weeks is Mother's Day. Um, which has traditionally been our Blanket Sunday when we give money to buy the blankets from Church World Service. So I hope that you will keep that in mind and when you're snuggling with your blankie or whatever gives you comfort, that you send up a little prayer for all the people that need these and could use a little comfort and love. Thank you. Thank you, Sandy. Well, since we have God's children all gathered already, we'll go ahead and take another moment <laughs> for all of God's children. One of the things that we're going to be talking a lot about today is creation and, and all of the things in it. We read some about it just a minute ago uh, in this Psalm 148, the very first thing we were doing in church today. And, and we're talking about how we're praising God. We're praising Him from all these different places, from mountaintops. And, and, and we're praising Him for the morning stars and all of these wonderful things. And uh, one of the things that we think about with this Earth Day thing is what we can do to help make it better. Well, I was looking on Facebook, I think yesterday or might have been this morning, and I saw that at Baltimore Woods, they planted 1,500 seeds for trees. Now, the thing about a tree is we're not going to see fruit or really much from that little seed this year or next year. It might be five years before that tree really gets up to where you can really see it and see it growing and see things changing. But its roots are going to dig deeper and its branches will reach higher. And the longer that goes on, the stronger the tree gets and the better 
for the world around it. So sometimes we might think, well, you know, we, when I was a kid, we had a, uh, my, I think I mentioned this before, but my mom, she was one of these that if something volunteered, we call it a volunteer when it just appears. In other words, it was planted by probably a bird. Uh, birds like to take seeds and they put them somewhere else. Well, so we would get these volunteers in different flower pots. Well, my mom would just take it from that one and put it in another one until it got big enough and plant it and just see what it is. <laughs> and it would keep growing. Well, there was a tree, it was an oak tree, and, and we planted it. I remember us planting it, and, and it started growing, and I remember it was no bigger than that because I, I was, we could jump over it. You know, as kids, that's what you want to do. We're having fun, and we're running and jumping. And now it's about that big around. When you plant a tree like that, it's not always about the shade you can get from it today or next year. Sometimes it's about what it's going to do for the next generation, for the people who come after us, a long time after us. So that's what we're going to be talking more about in just a few minutes. Um, but for now, let's, we'll, we're going to go ahead and have a prayer and, uh, and take us into the reading before the message for today. Let's pray. Dear God, we thank you for this opportunity to come before you today. We pray that you be with us to open our hearts and minds to plant seeds that will expand within us and help us reach our roots down and realize what needs to change. That our branches may reach up to perform that change in the world around us so that we can pave the way for the next generation. In Christ, amen. Well, today's lesson comes from 1 Timothy. It's a really short reading. I'm sure Deb's thinking, man, why did he, he I had to read all of this stuff. He's just reading this little bitty thing. <laughs> but uh, so just this little bitty thing. It comes from 1 Timothy. Now I'm going to talk for a second about 1 Timothy. First and second Timothy. So Paul is actually writing to a young minister, somebody who's new in ministry. But Paul knows who he is, and he sent him there to be the pastor for that community. Now, I'm sure that y'all have seen this kind of thing before, where you get a young pastor in a setting where a church has been for a couple of hundred years, or well, maybe not at that time, but where you have a, a group of very faithful believers who are very decisive in the way things should be done. And so what Paul is doing is he's trying to encourage Timothy to be the strong leader that he knows he can be and encourage the congregation to embrace him as part of that. And so, so it, the whole letter is kind of twofold that way. There, there are multiple things going on in there. But uh, listen now for this from 1 Timothy 4.12. Don't let anyone look down on you because you are young, but set an example for the believers in speech, in conduct, in love, in faith and in purity. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So just a minute on this text here. What we're looking at is, is really, he's trying to give Timothy the encouragement that he needs. Timothy is that younger person. Timothy is the one who needs to, to, to be present in that, to set an example for believers in speech, conduct, love, faith, and purity. I'm going to challenge us to look even younger. The ones who would be gathered up here on these steps a few minutes ago. Those are the ones for whom we, all of us, are modeling behavior. 
You might think, oh, no, 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 nobody signed me up for that. I haven't been doing that. I got news for you. Kids notice everything. Yeah? Kids see everything. They remember everything you don't want them to, and then some. <laughs> they remember, and they learn. They're sponges. They're absorbing everything around them. When I was a kid, we didn't recycle because recycling wasn't a thing. We were in a rural area. We, you know, when it, came, when it became a thing and there was a place to take stuff, we did. We started learning and adapting. But we've gone past that point anymore. We've gone to the point of needing to make significant changes. Now, when we, when we look at something like 1 Timothy today, he's being called to be a role model because of his speech, his conduct, his love, his faith, and his purity. We're called to do no less. Because everything we're doing is modeling for that generation. They're watching. They're watching. So when we think about the routines that we create, when we, uh, you know, it wasn't unusual 30, 40 years ago to see someone throwing garbage out a window. That modeled behavior is learned and then the next generation thinks it's okay until somebody says, no, <laughs> don't do that. Instead of modeling the correct behavior, we've seen and experienced all of this negativity. So what we want to do is change things that way because we know God created all and we know that when God created it, it was, was it bad or? Good. It was good. It was very good. So the problem here in this scenario is not God <laughs> and it's not creation. It comes back to us and what we can do and we can do something. So what I'm, uh, one of the things that we want to think about are ways that in Christ, as a practice of faith and theology, now when we say uh, odd words like theology, what we're saying is how we talk about God, who God is for us and how we talk about God and demonstrate God through things like planting seeds enjoying flowers. We can see the beauty that God has placed before us. So when we do that, and, and in just a minute, we're going to kind of do our little breakout thing and, and discuss amongst ourselves. Um, but I want us to think about, remember Joshua, and he, he was, Moses is getting ready to go into the promised land, wasn't he? He, he, He's been wandering for a long time. Can you imagine going through a desert for 40 years, looking forward to going somewhere? You can practically see it. And then you learn you're not going to get to go there. It's not for you. It's for the next generation. Cynthia Coe writes, monumental change in the way we live takes energy and fresh ideas. As we look to new ways of using our Earth's resources and living our daily lives in radically different ways, we will need energetic leaders. These little ones up here. That's where the energy is. <laughs> energetic leaders with fresh ideas. We will need new young leaders who are able to take on the big job of entering a world of harmony with nature and make this new world sustainable for everyone. You see, that's one of the frightening, there, there, there are lots of levels to this in so many different directions. We could do a year-long uh, sermon series on just the eco ecological damage that is against what we believe in. 
that is against what God set before us. But we just have one day that we're looking at this today. We're baby steps moving forward into this. So when you come to your little groups, I want you to think about this. What is God asking of us right here, literally? I don't mean abstract. I don't mean uh, U.S. government. I don't mean, I mean literally the people in this room. What is God asking of us for the next generation? What is God asking you for these little ones? What is God asking of us? And how do we create success or how do we do enact, take action on what God is asking? So basically, what is God asking of us for this next generation? And how do we make that happen? Now, you can go back and look at Scripture. You can look at any of the Scripture references today. Uh, I mean, we've got Psalm 148 in the bulletin for you there. Um, but just, I would encourage you now, turn to your neighbors. If you're comfortable with mask on, mask on. Uh, if and, and just take a few minutes. I didn't bring the thing in, but I'll, I'll kind of bring us back to the circle in about, I'm going to give you 10 minutes. You might think, 10 whole minutes? Really? <laughs> it's going to go by quickly, trust me. So uh, in about 10 minutes, the, this, this, uh, I'll, I'll kind of pull us back to point. <laughs> Now, um, as for you people who are with us online, I am just going to take a minute and talk to you and to me. Uh, I turned off the, well, let me turn this other mic away from me. <laughs> um, and I'm just going to take a moment and talk with you about, uh, you know, maybe what's going through my head about this. You see, we've got so many different things going on in the world. But one of the things that concerns me when I think about what is God asking of us for this generation, for this next generation, for these little ones, I think about what is, how can we help them succeed? How can we help them be assured of clean air and clean water? Because we see it getting so bad around us. Um, so I think maybe the, to begin with, we have to teach them why those things are important. Uh, teach them, you know, maybe why it's about more than having an air purifier or a water filter. Um, you know, that, that there's a balance to nature and how we're connected to it. So I think probably that's where I would go when, when I'm thinking about what's for the next generation, but how do we create that success for them? How do we help them see that? Uh, I think there's a, a, a strong connection. Not everyone would agree, but so, I feel like there's a strong connection between say, between science and, and our faith. And that, um, you know, when we are looking at who God is in our lives as a provider, so that when we, it has to be about more than us. It has to be about all of God's creation. So that when uh, God is, you know, when, it, when God, God created everything, there was a lot of balance. The water was clean, the air was clean, the animals were strong and numerous. And so what we end up doing is creating an, an imbalance. And so I think by helping educate, um, educate about how it's natural to have clean water, how it's natural to protect that. And not only is it natural, it's faithful because God created these good things for each and every one of us. And so what we're trying to do is preserve it as best we can as caretakers of all of creation, for as being as caretakers for not just what God has given us, 
but for we ourselves and the animals and the plants and all that's around. So I think that's for me what I see. Uh, so how do we create success? I think education is paramount. So it's not just education about God, but it's education about God and creation. All of those wonderful things around us. Now, um, those are just kind of my thoughts, and I'm rambling here, but I would also encourage you to just put in the comment section, what are you thinking? What do you think would be uh, some marks of success, some marks of what God, how do we do what God is asking us to do? How do we put things like that into action? Um, so yeah, it can, it can be a, vari a variety of ways, but I would encourage you in, on Facebook, just you know, put it in the comment section. Let us know what you're thinking, and I'll take a look at those, and uh, grateful for all your feedback. And this is just one of the opportunities or ways that we can talk about who God is and how we serve God even through helping our own environment. It's kind of splendid that way. It's a, it's a, a twofer, if you will, so that when we're responding to what God is asking of us for this next generation, and the generations to follow, that we are also serving them. So we're trying to create good habits, creating routines of, of better longevity, of having real conversations about change that can take place. And so I'm going to uh, not just ramble for the next five minutes, but <laughs> I'll give you five minutes then to to put your own thoughts in, and uh, I'll come back to it, and, and like I say, I'll give you five minutes, and then we'll, we'll come back, and, and I'll pull everyone together. Thank you in advance. Well, I do hope that some of you are uh, putting in the comments. I can't see the comments until the service is over and I go back and check on Facebook. But I do hope to, to hear from you all and, and 
basically looking at those questions of uh, what is God asking of us for the next generation? So as far as the environment, if you're just joining us, as far as the environment, um, and, and how do we create success for the, help them create success? Or how do we do what God is asking of us for this next generation? So it's about modeling uh, good behavior as far as the environment, um, and, and practice, as they say, practicing what we preach. One minute warning, one minute warning. <laughs> The Lord be with you. So have y'all got it all fixed now? <laughs> There's a lot to it, isn't there? It's not a simple thing. And just in case you had any doubts, no, I don't have the right answer that I'm now going to give you. <laughs> because it's not about what one person does. It's about how a community is transformed. It's about how folks can come together and make a difference. But it can begin with one person. I've seen uh, videos of, from different other countries where because of uh, just total cuts of forests, there was nothing. And so the land, they were having mudslides and all of these different things. Somebody went out and started planting. This guy just made it his, his job was in his spare time he planted seeds and now there's a forest there again and it's protected one person can make a difference so imagine what a community can do when we're working together so i would encourage you as you as you've got some some thoughts if you want to share them there's that blank bit on the back of the insert um and and thank you for for taking time and doing that so what we're going to do now is just, just have a, a quick prayer and then we'll continue. So Holy God, we pray for your blessing and guidance in these conversations, that they grow from here, that they not end with the service, but that they find new life, that they find ways for those roots to dig deeper and branches to reach higher to be transforming the environment around us. And all of this, Lord, we pray in the name of Christ our Savior. Amen.
as you're able, uh, please remain standing as we join together affirming our faith using the Apostles' Creed, the ecumenical version found on page 14 in the front of your hymnal. And so now I ask you, friends, what do you believe? I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Be seated. Um, let's see. I'll ask if we have any additional prayer concerns. I have uh, Charlie on here. For those who don't know, he's got some uh, pain in his hip from a little slip the other night. So just keep him in prayer for patience. And well, patience, I think, goes a long way, doesn't it? Um, so being a good patient is important. Are there others? Yes, ma'am. Um, oh, goodness. You said that was Mike? Mike. Any others? Bless you. Then let's go to God in prayer. God of all grace and mercy, God of all creation, we acknowledge it is your spirit that moved over the chaos of creation, calming it, ordering it, creating it, bringing life where there was none, stirring down to the smallest bit, life. We are grateful. We are grateful to be a part of your creation, Lord. And we pray that you help us to understand what it means to sustain it, what it means to embrace it, what it means to help it heal from the damage that we've inflicted. So, Lord, forgive us for any shortcomings that we have on that front. But by your Spirit, open our hearts and minds to make those changes. To improve life on this earth for those who come after us. So, Lord, we pray this day, especially for the people in the Ukraine. We pray for peace. We pray for your strength and presence to be known by all. And for the family of Hyun and family of Katie. And for all who grieve this day, Lord, we pray. We pray that they may know your presence. Also the family of Chris. So we have also prayers for healing for Pam and so many others who are struggling with health these days, Lord. And we lift to you, Charlie, for quick healing and patience and understanding as, we, as he seeks healing. And for Mike, Lord, we pray that you would bring him comfort and strength that he needs for all that he faces, as well as his family. We pray for all who have been affected by this coronavirus outbreak, for all those who are in need, whether physical need, emotional need, or spiritual. For victims of all disasters, natural or man-made, Lord, we pray. We pray for our own military women and men who serve faithfully. We pray for first responders, Watch over all who seek to preserve life, Lord. 
bless their efforts and give them the strength and assurance and understanding that they need. And above all, Lord, as always, we pray for peace. Peace can bring healing. Peace can heal our bodies, our world around us, and it can heal our own brokenness. So, Lord, we know that we can come to you boldly with this prayer as Christ taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And now, friends, as God has been so generous to us throughout our lives with all that we see around us, let us return a portion of that as we receive now our tithes and offerings. Lord, bless these offerings to further your kingdom and renew us in the creation that reflects your sacredness and glory. In all things we pray in the precious name of our Lord, the creator of all, Jesus Christ.
So friends, as we go from here today, keep the conversation going. It's not fixed yet. It's not done. The situation is urgent. We must do our part to help the next generation to succeed for the sake of God's good creation. And all this we pray in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen.